Excited after the arrival of my long-awaited HTC Vive, I took a look at the setup video that they have on their website and figured it looked easy enough. Uh, so I carved out a couple of hours over the weekend to try to get it set up. I have a old desktop computer that I built a long time ago, which was top of the line back then, but I'm sure isn't quite so top of the line now. Uh, but I figured I would use this to run the VR and just upgrade any of the components uh, that needed to be upgraded in order to get it to run virtual reality. So I figured throughout this process, I might as well do a video and show you guys what exactly it takes to run an HTC Vive. <laughs> First things first, you need to run the VR test. And in order to do that, you need to have a Steam account. So if you're not familiar, Steam is a clever little platform that allows people to download games instantly to their computer while navigating the catalog. It also has uh, some clever community features built in as well, but all you really need to know as far as running the HTC Vive is concerned is that you must have an account. So let's head to store.steampowered.com and click the install button at the top right to install it onto your computer. Open Steam up once it's downloaded and create an account if you don't already have one or log in of course if you do. Then head to library and tools at the top and double click on the Steam VR performance test to install it. Once installed, run the test and sit back while you watch a poor robot get his insides repaired. When it's done, you'll get a scorecard showing you if you are ready and if not, what parts of your setup need upgrading. Now, when I first did this test, I was just fortunate enough that the CPU that I have running in the machine was the AMD CPU that they actually list as the bare minimum for their requirements for VR. And besides that, my graphics card was, well, not up to snuff. So that needed to be replaced. Now, if you have a desktop computer, you can upgrade your CPU or your graphics card easily enough. Uh, you can click the link below for how to do it for your CPU, but as for the graphics card, it's as simple as buying one. I got the lowest NVIDIA card they recommend. The link uh, is also below for the one that I bought. Then when it arrives, opening up the computer, unscrewing the bracket holding the card steady, disconnecting the power cables from the old card, and popping it out of its PCI slot by pushing down on the lever. Then I put the new card in the same slot, reconnected the power cables, and secured the bracket back down with the same screw. After that, I booted it up, installed the NVIDIA drivers while plugged into my integrated graphics card, then swapped the cable and was all set to go. Then it was time to rerun the VR test, and this time, thankfully, we got all green. Lastly, before we start setting up the HD Vive's actual hardware, check the ports on the back of the graphics card. I was using an HDMI to connect to a TV, and since the graphics card I got only has one HDMI slot and the Vive requires one, I had to find another way to connect it to the TV. Since the card I got has a display port as well, I ended up grabbing a display port to HDMI adapter that you can check out at the link below, and plugged that into the TV so that I could have the HDMI port free for the Vive. Next, we can actually start setting up the Vive's hardware. Uh, the first thing we need to do though is set up the base stations. The two base stations that it comes with are essentially little cubes that emit infrared light over the room that bounces off the headset and controller's tiny divots to tell the system where they are and their orientation. While they come with wall mounts that you can screw into a wall directly, I opted for not doing that since I plan to force this thing on my friends, colleagues, and anyone else willing to try and need it to be a little more portable. Instead, I opted to use some tripods that I had laying around and some mounts to allow me to angle the base stations since that is required. There is a link below for where you can buy those, by the way. Next, we're gonna set each one at opposite corners of the space you plan to use, trying to keep it rectangular or square if your apartment allows for it. Being that I live in a tiny New York City apartment, I basically had to throw all of my furniture over to one side just to get a space that it would accept as the minimum play area. Now you can also set this up in standing mode, but it kind of defeats a lot of the purpose. I mean, one of the main benefits of the Vive is the fact that you can move around the room uh, and that corresponds to moving around within the game. And it's something that I just highly recommend you at least seriously attempt to get working. Then plug them in with their included power adapters, raise them up to about six and a half feet, tilt them down at a 35 to 45 degree angle and adjust them so that the flashing purple light turns green on both, which indicates that they both can see one another. If you're having a hard time, you can also use the included sync cable to plug them into each other. 
Next, plug in the link station into the back of the computer using the included USB cable and HDMI cable, and plug it into its power adapter as well. Then we can plug the headset into the orange side of the link station with its long three cable bundle. After that is lit up, turn on the controllers by holding down the power buttons on each one until they chime on. Now, head to htcvive.com setup and download the setup program and install it. Once installed, open it and have it download the software needed. You should already have Steam thanks to using it for the VR performance test earlier, so it'll just skip that step. Once installed, it'll have you download Steam VR, which is essentially a small monitor program to make sure the VR headset is connected to Steam properly. If anything isn't lit up as green, make sure it is in between the two base stations and powered on or connected to the computer. I had to actually plug my controllers in one at a time using the included micro USB cable to my computer in order for Steam VR to finally find them and then turn them green. After you get the all green, we'll click the down arrow in that program and select Run Room Setup. The room setup will then guide you through pointing a controller at the computer monitor and holding down the trigger, then putting the two controllers on the floor between the base stations for it to calibrate where the floor is. Then it'll have you trace the space you plan to use for VR by holding down the trigger on a remote as you move along the perimeter. Eventually though, you'll get an outline and it'll let you know if it's large enough. You can also click edit to move the place space within your outline if say, you know, you don't live in New York City. After that, you should be all set and can head to Steam and click Add a Game to enter in the promo code that HTC gave you if you pre-ordered to get some free games, or you can click on Store Games Virtual Reality, then click the X on Oculus to just show games optimized for the Vive. Pick one you like, click Install, then click Play and Enjoy. And there you go, what it actually takes to set up the HTC Vive. Is the setup process what you thought it would be. Did you guys learn anything about the Vive while watching this? And are there any things you'd like to see me do? Any videos that you'd like to see me do with the HTC Vive while I have it? Please leave them in the comments below. Would love to hear what you guys think. If you like this video, please thumbs up it or share it. It is greatly appreciated. And if you want more videos like this, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. And as always, thanks for watching.